Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Lehman Theater, to Miami Dade College North Campus, uh, my alma mater. I was a student here. I was sitting where you are 20 years ago, and uh, very proud. Yes, go Sharks! My name is Nelson Incapié. I'm the CEO of the Miami Dade College Foundation. What the foundation does is we raise essential dollars so that students can succeed and can come back once they have succeeded to tell us how they did what they did. We have a great lineup for us, a great conversation between two amazing human beings, two women who have accomplished so much in such a short time that you will be amazed by what you hear, by what you see. Um, and, and you will, at one point, have goosebumps. Enjoy them. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the beautiful conversation that will happen. But, you know, let me not talk anymore so that we can introduce our first guest, who is, um, she's became an overnight sensation. She's an architect, graduated from the Honors College, she, uh, her cousin uh, started on TikTok asking her to speak like a, in Spanish, like an Argentinian, Venezuelan, Spanish, Cuban, Puerto Rican, Colombian, Venezuelan, Mexican, and you name it. Estoy acá con mi prima y ella me va a decir diferentes acentos y yo tengo que cambiar la manera en la que estoy hablando. Puerto Rico. Porque yo le digo, Andrea, vamos a salir con el carro y vamos a dar unas vueltas para practicar. Una puede practicar, manejar por acá, México. por las calles, güey, de que yo te presto mi coche. O sea, dábamos mil vueltas. O sea, es acción de gracias. Yo siento que es importante como hacer actos de bondad. Argentina. ¿Sabes lo que te digo? Yo pienso que aparte hay que estar agradecidos. Hoy es un día para recordar las cosas buenas que tenemos. Cubano. O sea... Mimi, yo te digo, tú tienes que estar agradecido. A veces uno se lo olvida y uno da todo lo que tiene por sentado. Español. Y sabes, y andas de mal agradecido y sientes que mereces todo. Pues no, que hay que decir, gracias a Dios, yo tengo. Venezolano. Sabes, todas las cosas que yo tengo. Porque tú no, tú, tú no tienes que tener nada al final del día. Tú tienes que valorar Colombiano. cada pequeña cosa, parse. <risa> uno tiene, o sea, yo estoy súper agradecida de que vos estés acá y de que podamos compartir Chilena. este momento. Y eso es todo lo que digo, creo que acabamos de acabar. Muchas gracias. Tiempo. So, her TikTok got a million views overnight. So, let me remind you, she is a graduate of Miami Dade College. So, don't think that because she became an overnight sensation, she didn't get an education at MDC. So, let's welcome first Mariana Girgenti. And our second guest, uh, just as talented, she also a graduate of Miami Dade College, nominated for a Latin Grammy, incredible talented musician, amazing human being. She will be uh, at the Latin Grammys in November in Sevilla, and hopefully we are all pulling for her. She will return to Miami Dade with a Latin Grammy. Antes, cuando no encontré la gran respuesta que busqué y busqué, busqué tanto que ya me olvidé. Olvidé que el amor no contesta. Jamás. Todo puesto en su lugar, entre risas y desorden, la mirada de repente puesta al foco en lo que fue. Atesoramos sin saber. Amigo, que no te importa todo lo que piense la gente. Hacer el ridículo es solo para la gente valiente. Recuerdo el día en que te conocí. Me regalabas flores. Porque sí, un millón de mariposas. Que sentí, sin dudarlo, entregué lo mejor de mí. Mejor álbum vocal pop. Beautiful Humans, volumen 1. Al amor. So we're very, very, very happy to have in the house the very talented Al amor. Hi guys. Hi Ale. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Glad to be here with yeah. you. Same. Not long ago we were there. When did you graduate? 
2012. Oh, really? That was a long time ago. <laughs> I started right after you left. I, I was here from 2014 to 2016. Amazing. What did you do Amazing. after you graduated? Did you go into music like right away? I never knew this. So I had, um, I had a funny story. I started, I, I self-funded my first uh, semester at Berklee College of Music and then it got very expensive very fast. <laughs> and then I came back to Miami-Dade and oh. I finished my studies in Miami-Dade and that was um, the best decision because now my student loans are not ridiculous. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is like, you know, a reality for a lot of people. So it was so. always music for you. You studied always. music here yeah. as well? I studied music here at uh, the Wolfson campus, at the Kendall campus. I would just, I kept like researching uh, which ones were the best teachers for each of the classes. Uh -huh. And even though people were like, you're crazy to drive back and forth. And I was like, no, I'm looking for the best classes. I did that too. But my case was different because I was undecided when I started here. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know. I want to be, I could be a dentist or I could be a psychologist or you know what? I want, I want to be an actress. And then I was undecided and I remember I met with a counselor and they were like, okay, what do you, what do you want to study? And I was like, I don't know what I want to study. And I was in the honors college. So they're like, in two years, you have to be out and transfer to another school. And I was like, okay, I need to choose. And then they were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, okay, these are my options. And then I was like, well, I want to be an actress or a psychologist or a dentist. And I was like, or architecture. And she was like, wait, <laughs> wow. what? And I was like, why yeah, range? why? <laughs> and she, she told me like, if you're thinking about studying architecture, you need to start right away because it's not like the other careers where you're taking regular classes, like mm -hmm. architecture. If you don't take the first semester, like you're late a year. And I was like, wow. So she's like, let's start with that and then let's see. Mm -hmm. And I studied architecture. I did my two years in architecture. I transferred to Los Angeles to a top school in architecture, finished my career, worked in architecture until my video went viral and my life changed a little bit. But yeah, I still work in so architecture. So you can design my future dream house? Yes. Oh, amazing. I got you. you guys, anyone, if you, and you know, later I got you if you're looking for it. <laughs> amazing. But yeah, so that's nice to see that you were always like, okay, music is my thing. Because I, I always wanted to be an actress or do things in communication, but it was like, like I don't know, like, what do, what do I do? Like, what, where do I study? Mm -hmm. How do I get there? Mm -hmm. I saw a safer path in architecture. And even though I think, I think uh, there's an expectation and this, I'm going to like break the fourth wall here and like try to speak to everyone who's here. Um, I feel like it's totally valid to change your mind, you know? Totally. It's como que si cambias de parecer, está bien. It's, it doesn't, there's no way that when you're like, I don't know, how old are you? Like, how old are you guys? I know there's some people that are in high school, so you it, definitely 15? should not know what you want to do. It's totally fine. So if it was at 15, 16, 15, 16, right? what else? What's the other age range? Wait, so once at 41? No, no, 21. <laughs> 21, <laughs> like 24. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm 34 and sometimes I don't know what I want to do. So like, you know, yeah, it's okay to explore. It's okay to like change your mind. It's okay to, I feel like sometimes it's just as important to know what you don't want to do. Exactly. You know, like try it out and you're like, oh, okay, maybe this, and this happens in music all the time, all the time where you're like, I'm going to record, I don't know, I want this song to be a, with uh, drums and bass and keyboard and an electric guitar and this, and you record everything, and then you're like, mm. actually, I just want it to be piano and voice. And you're like, oh, damn. You know, I did like, all of that. All of that. But, but you, need, you needed to do all that to figure out that that's not what you exactly. wanted to do. Exactly. And yeah, it's tricky. You're like, I, I, I was like anxious when I was in school, and I had to make this decision because mm -hmm. I before I noticed that I was terrible at decision making. And like when I was faced with like what seemed to be like a life important decision that was gonna change the course of my life, mm -hmm. I would freeze and I would cry and I would be like, I don't know what to do. How am I supposed to decide what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life? And you then my parents to. would be like, Mari, we're all immigrants. Like we don't do what we went to school for. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like you're gonna learn. And one friend was the one that, that helped me with this whole like, idea of making a decision at least he was studying architecture in Venezuela and he told me Mari when I studied architecture I didn't feel like I was studying to be an architect I was studying for life like the lessons that I learned in my career made me 
a better person, mm -hmm. made me work in teams, made me be more disciplined, more focused. And those are the things that I take from my career. And mm -hmm. most careers you learn that, you learn your discipline, you learn to be focused, you learn to work in teams. And those are the things that are gonna help you no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I took the most from, from what, I was, what I was studying. I was actually telling my brother earlier that I, I was always like the rule follower. I, I was like, give me a set of instructions and I'll do it. Whatever, I just need it, like, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Right, because you didn't want to make a decision. I didn't want to make decisions. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I, and I, was, I guess I was raised like that, like someone always telling me, like, this is where you go, this is where you walk, this is what you do, and this is what's accepted. And I was like, okay, easy. I just follow instructions and I'm good. But then I went to this other school, which was very artistic. And that was, I was very technical. I was always like the measurements and the little details. And I was, I'm a perfectionist. So everything had to be like controlled. And then I go to this school and the professors are like, what do you want to do? I'm like, what do you mean what I want to do? Aren't you going to tell me what to do? And they're like, no, it's your project. It's your, your design. What did you want to do? I'll help you make it. But you're the one that, that's in control. And it took me so long <laughs> to, to be okay with that but to learn how to be creative, how to be in control of my decisions. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that's the, the most beautiful thing that I learned in architecture school is like, you're in control, what do you want? We'll help you, but you have to decide and you right. have to make that decision. It's so funny that you say that because I was the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you all can tell by our The way outfits. we're dressed. That we are polar opposites. By yes. the way, we <laughs> our outfits were beautifully designed. By, by Alberto Miami Fashion Institute, Professor Alberto, Alberto Ro Ravelo. He's right here. So, snap, snap for you. These are beautiful. Uh, but we're, I mean, clearly we're polar opposites. And in school, I was looking for the rules to break. Ooh. O sea, I was the one that was like, but what, why do we have to do it like that? And, why, and I would question everything that no my way. teachers would say. You know, I have a... It's a funny story. My mom is a saint for putting up with me when I was younger. <laughs> oh my God. But I was, I don't know, I maybe, maybe it's like, when do you learn your ABCs? When you're in preschool? Yeah. When you're in, or in K, right? In yeah, kinder? Preschool. Okay. Uh -huh. um, the teacher <laughs> was very concerned because she, she called up my mom and she said, eh, we don't know what to do with your daughter because she should have known her ABCs by now, but she doesn't know them. And my mom's like, Alejandra, no se sabe, le, obvio que sí. Like, of course she does. And so I came home from school and she's like, mi amor, the teacher is telling me that you don't know your ABCs. I'm like, mom, of course I know my ABCs. And, she, want to tell them. and, no, and she's like, okay, so what are they? So I tell her my, the ABCs. And then she's like, so when the teacher asks you, why don't you say it? I'm like, she already knows them. Why does she need me to say the ABCs? Oh my God, Ale. <laughs> She already knows what it is. She doesn't need me to give her that information. And that was the status quo for the remainder of like school. Until there was one teacher that was like, you need to redo this grade. And then me organice. I had to, yeah. Oh, you'd redo. I had to grade. redo one of the grades. And this was in Colombia. Uh -huh. And she was like, no, this attitude is not going to work with me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't study. I was very smart, but I wouldn't study. So I would just pass the class like... En la raya. Like, I wouldn't do anything for the first half of the school year, and then the last half I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. That's so uh, the only classes that I passed that year were music, obviously. So you always knew. And physical education. <laughs> <laughs> Las divertidas. Yeah, and Las my divertidas. mom would tell me, she's like, what? I'm like, these are the things that I like to do. I don't want to study statistics. I don't want to do that, you know? Like, it's, I don't want to do it, and you know? And you didn't, yeah. And, and I, did, I did, and I did, and I passed, and whatever, but there was a, that was a whole, a, it's so funny that you say that, because I was the complete opposite. Oh so when God. finally I get somewhere, and they're telling me, like, okay, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I want to do Let this. Let me tell <laughs> I have all these plans. Yeah. No, yeah. for me, I was like the straight A, never go out because I have homework and I have to study and I have to do all these things and I have to get straight A and I have to apply to no. all these scholarships and I have to, have to, have to, have to do all these things. And it did get me to where I wanted to mm -hmm. be or in the moment where my head was at. Mm -hmm. But I had to put myself in situations where I wasn't in control to then 
like find that part in me that could improvise, that could be okay in unexpected situations. Because when mm -hmm. you're trying to be in control all the time, then something unexpected happens and you're like freaking out, like what do I do? And actually that was part of the story I was telling you backstage that I've been on this stage before when I was in the Honors College. Uh, one time they were doing this talent show. And I was always involved because that's what, that I always wanted to be like part of something and I knew that being involved in the clubs and in everything, you know, it helps you get noticed to, to, so that professors know who you are, they know what type of student you are and they help you like with opportunities and all of that. So I always volunteer for everything and I was like, <laughs> who wants to organize the, the talent show? I was like, me, 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 me. So, but I thought it was like, okay, get the chairs, organize the, the space, the audio, get the people. And they were like, no, you actually have to get the talent. So there I was going around school, like who has a talent? Like you, you're great at the trumpet. Like, do you want to show your talent? But people were so scared to perform until I found this girl who was amazing at singing, Kika, I remember her name. And I spoke with her and I was like, Kika, you need to perform. You're an amazing singer. You need to do all this. And she told me, I'll perform if you sing with me. And I was like, Kika, I, I'm not a singer. And she was like, mm -mm -mm, I saw you. Cause one, in another event that we were organizing, I, we had like, we were wrapping up and I had a microphone and we had a screen like that and we had access to YouTube. So what do we do? Karaoke session. And I sang Eminem, Love the Way You Lie. And I was Eminem, but that was like among four girls. Like we were like, do you remember the rap? Oh yeah, I know the whole thing. You want to do a little bit? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you have to start, do you know the first part? That's all right, because I like the way it hurts, right? I can't tell you what it really is. I can only tell you what it feels like. And right now, it's a steel knife on my windpipe. I can't breathe, but I still fight. Well, I can't fight as long as the wrong feels right. It's like I'm in a flight. Hang on for love. Drip from my hate. It's like a humpy pain. I love it. The more I suffer, I suffocate. And right before I'm about to drown, she resuscitates me. She hates me, and I love it. Wait, where you going? I'm leaving you. No, you ain't. Come back. We're running right back. Here we go again. It's so insane, because when it's going good, it's going great. And Superman would have winning his flag. She's low as like, But when it's bad, it's awful. I feel so ashamed. Of myself. Who's that dude? I don't even know his name. I lay hands to her. I never to solo again. I guess I don't know my own strength. You forgot to drop your mic. <laughs> so I did that <laughs> in the talent show in my small campus and all the professors were like, what? Because I was the study girl, straight A, always asking the questions, sitting in the front. Never did anything like that. <laughs> All of a sudden, the dean, math professor, leadership, they were like the jury. <laughs> and I put like, I grabbed a jacket from my brother and like the chains from the carnival. And I got on the stage and like, I was like here with the hoodie, like giving my back. And this girl, she was like with her d red dress, like, love the way you like. And then <laughs> and when it started, I turned around and I started rapping and everyone was like, what in the world? But I did that because it was a close group of friends. We won that, that talent show, and they're like, now you need to perform in the North Campus where all the winners from the other campuses are. I was like, what? <laughs> I got here, there were like opera singers, people playing the piano like with their feet, and I was like, you, I did that as a joke. What do you mean I have to perform? But we did the whole thing again. I was standing right here with her, and we played the whole like, where you going? I'm leaving you. No, you ain't. What? And, and, and that got me out of my comfort zone for sure. Mm -hmm. But for me, that moment was like, then when I went to architecture and I had to present my thesis in front of all these architects that were thriving in the world, and I was like, I can't do this. I'm so scared. And my parents would always bring me back to these moments like, Mari, if you could rap Eminem. If you could rap Eminem in front of the entire college, I think you can present your thesis in front of these architects. And that always gave me the confidence to put myself in that situation was like, oh, I can do that. Then I can do this other thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of, well, the first time you're like, well, I've never done this before. But then after you do it once, well, I did it once and I can do it a second time. Mm -hmm. And now I can keep doing it mm -hmm. because I already put myself one time to do something like that. Yep. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> After MDC, uh -huh. I guess I want to know how we got to where we are today. Because you are nominated for a Latin Grammy. So, I wanna, yes, yes. Ale Mort. 
And I didn't know you until two weeks ago where we, find, we found each other in an event for Hispanic Heritage Month, mm -hmm. where I got the opportunity to interview you and you told me about all the amazing things that are happening for you. Mm -hmm. But I want to know, how did you get there and how was the path to get there? It was hard. It still is. Um, but it's so beautiful and I love it so much that it doesn't feel like work, you know? I love that. Um, I graduated MDC. There was a part of me that was like, oh, maybe, you know, I should have finished Berkeley or I should have done this or I should have done that. And I will confess that there is a, a part of me that underestimated the power of the education in Miami Dade at the beginning. Mm -hmm. At first, and these are like full confessions being vulnerable here, where I was like, you know, but maybe there's like another place that I can go to and whatever. And the financial capabilities that my family had would not allow for me to do that, you know? Um, and then there was a point where I was just paying for my own education, you know? So it was so um, beautiful to discover myself taking such advantage of this school, you know? And, and taking advantage of, every, of all of the professors that were here and all of the beautiful humans that I met here as well, you know? There are still a lot of colleagues now that are very successful musicians that I can call up and be like, hey, you know, like, I want to record this, I want to do this, are you down? You know, and then there's like this connection, you know? Um, so it was very special. It was very, very special to, to notice and to see, a, to notice myself being grateful to myself for making that decision of not, maybe going abroad or going somewhere else and then drowning in, in a crazy Realizing debt, you know? You and like, could do it with what then, you had. And just being, like opening your eyes and being grateful for what you do have mm -hmm. and not being so focused on what you don't have. And I feel like that's the whole premise behind the album, you know, behind Beautiful Humans. So, I mean, that happened. Then I started, like you, I started working at um, Nordstrom. I was selling very expensive, unnecessarily expensive shoes to people that probably uh -huh. didn't need them, you know? <laughs> um, and I was really good at it because I'm really good at talking to people, but I was very sad, you know? I was very sad. My soul was like arrugada. Were you doing both things at the same time or taking a break? I was trying to do both things at the same time, but it's really unsustainable for you to have a gig that ends at one in the morning and then having to be fresh and perfect and ready to sell everything that you can at eight o'clock in the morning the next day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and there was one time, it was towards Christmas time, where there was a sale going on and we were on our feet for like a good 14 hours. Um, and it was a long time. And I remember going to the machine to clock out at the end of the day and my feet were hurting so much. And I was just like, I had a moment, you know, I had one of those Spiritual awakenings, as you may call, you know, sometimes you're just like, what the f am I doing with my life? You know, like, what is this? And I was standing there in front of that screen and I said, okay, if my feet are going to hurt, this cannot be the reason why. Wow. It has to be because I went out dancing with, my, with the love of my life all night. Is it because I went, uh, I don't know, maybe I wore the wrong shoes to a red carpet and I was like, I should have never worn these. <laughs> like may, that should yeah. be the reason why my feet are hurting or because I've just been working so hard on myself and my music and my project, but not to make somebody else successful or to make more money for somebody else, you know, and, and especially in something that it's not something that I'm passionate about. So I had that whole moment in like, 30 seconds when I was staring in front of the screen and then there's people behind me trying to clock out and I was like <laughs> looking at the screen and then I was like oh I'm so sorry <laughs> okay I clocked out a whole life crisis in 30 seconds <laughs> yeah I, was like, I'm, I'm I clocked out and then the next day I turned in my two weeks I printed the paper wow. and I was like okay I don't know what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna make sure that what I make a living out of is just music um and that's what I did I put in my two weeks and I was like thank you all so much You've allowed me to save a lot of money, but I hate it here. So I'm going to go and do my thing, you know, and, and I did that. Um, and it takes a lot to do that. It takes a lot of courage. For you, was it like, I'm just going to do it? Like I, you knew exactly or I mean, I'm doing that. It's I just did it, but I was scared, of course. 
But I feel like if you're not scared, then one, you're not alive. <laughs> That's true. Two, you're not human. And then maybe, I know it's really cheesy and that saying is like, if it doesn't scare you, then your dreams are not big enough. But it's so true. You know, like it should scare you. It should scare the out of you, you know? <laughs> I don't know if I can curse here. That's why I'm not doing it. So, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm making yeah. sure I do my little beeps by myself. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah that was that was something that happened then well you know something very similar happened to me too nice I was turning 25 and I was 25 the, when I quit no way yeah <laughs> I was 25 when this whole thing happened to me <laughs> yeah no for sure I was the day that I turned 25 I remember I was like in in the bathroom in my bedroom looking my, at myself in the mirror and I just started feeling like is this what my life is gonna be for the rest of my life right And um, am I okay with this? I mean, I, I did go to one of the top schools for architecture in the country. I graduated. I worked for amazing architects. I was back because of the pandemic to Miami. And I was working at an interior design place. And, and I love it, but is this it for me? Mm. And I remember I was like, well, most people have like this quarter of a century crisis when you turn 25. So I was like, let me start thinking, reflecting on my life. And I remember it got to a point where I was like, what if this was it because if this is it then there's there's no difference and i got well some people might think dark for me was very motivational thinking like there's no difference in dying today and dieting in 50 years if this is it for me mm -hmm. if this is what's going to keep happening for the rest of my life so then i started thinking what if someone came to tell me like today was your last day like everything that you did up to this point that was it for you and how would i feel with that with someone telling me like this was it What would you have wished you would have done in those 25 years if today I come to tell you, like, today's over? Mm. And three things came to my mind that day. Um, but the main one that <laughs> became the one that I ended up doing was, like, I wish there was something out there where people knew about this thing that I do. Because I loved imitating accents. Like, I can just start talking to you like I'm Colombian, and then in, in English, I just go like this, because they, that was like my party trick. I would go to people, and then they'd be like, Mari, speak Colombian, I'm like, let me tell you. Or Mexican, and I'd be like, oh my God, let me tell you about this thing that happened to me yesterday. You're not gonna believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Or from Spain, because Spain is, is very difficult. It's one of the accents that you're, oh my accents. God, imagined. <laughs> So I used to do this all the time with my friends. And I was like, this is, this is my thing. I love doing this. But of course, I couldn't picture like, okay, what am I going to do? Post a video and then what? But I knew at least if this was my last day as I was picturing, I wish there was at least one video where, you know, if, I, if I'm gone, they'll be like, oh, she did that thing. That's so cool. But if I'm gone today, nobody knows that that was my passion, that that was the thing that I would love doing in front of people. And when I saw someone from a different country, I would try to imitate them and get their feedback. That was my thing. And I was like, I wish I would have done something with that. I never tried it. And then it came to me like, okay, what if I told you you get one extra year? You, might, you die. Today was your last day. Bye. You're gone. But you get an extra year to try doing those things just to find out what would have happened. Mm. Just to see what would have happened if you would have at least tried. And I started having that mentality because I was like, I know that I want to do something, but when? Why do I keep thinking, oh, later? I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it later. When? When I'm 70? Like, when is it going to be the day that I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do it. I have to just do it. I'm never going to feel like 100% like secure because I didn't know, okay, I'm going to do what? A video? I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew that I wanted to do something. So I started thinking, okay, about this monologue that I wanted to do, because you would see videos in YouTube and Instagram, people making accents. But I was like, I want to see someone like just changing accents really quickly on the spot. And like just in one minute, like change, change, change. So I started practicing doing that in my car. Like as I was driving to work, I'll be like making different accents and just thinking of a monologue in my head. I did a video like this in Instagram, but I'm going to try to do the same thing for TikTok, which is under one minute. This is Argentinian. This, you can tell somebody speaking Argentinian because they change the U sound for the shoe sound. Then there's Mexican. Mexican basically is like you're singing a song, you're chilling in Tulum. This is basically what it sounds like. There's also Colombian. Colombian is like the most exotic in my opinion. Colombians have this flavor when they speak that is so beautiful. And then there's Venezuelan. In Venezuela, you can tell somebody speaking from Venezuela because they change the S for the, for like a gasp. It's like, 
like this this is amazing this is is, is everything you want <laughs> q1 q1 is like you know like everything gonna be fine like you don't have to worry and then there's spanish from spain which is this one and it's just uh, exaggerating your ss <laughs> bye and then in November, two months later, my birthday was in September, in November, that's when I uploaded my first video on Instagram. And it was because I recorded the video and funny enough how things happened. A friend of my mom that was visiting from Norway, from, I think it was Norway, she, she came to visit and she was like, Mari, you know, I remember that you used to do accents when you were little. What, do you, do you still do that? Like, is that something you, and I was like, funny enough, I was just recording a video in my car. And she's like, let me see it. I'm like, mm, I just wanted you to know. I'm not going to show you the video. She's like, come on. I know you since you were little. Show me the video. I showed her the video. She started cracking up. And she's like, girl, you need to upload this. And she told me, like, I believe that if you share this video, you'll have, like, a million followers right now. And I told her, like, yeah, thank you. But that's not how it works. Like, thank and you. That's how it worked. That, and that is how it actually <laughs> ended up working. But it was like, I posted the video and I kept on posting because I posted my first video. I was like, well, how am I just going to post this? Like, so I recorded a video. It was like four minutes long, just like changing accents and, and explain. It was in Spanish. So I empezaba a hablar así de que no, no sabes, yo vivía con una mexicana, ¿qué tal? And then Colombia, no, porque en Colombia, pues, nosotros tenemos diferentes acentos. Viste que en Argentina también nosotros somos recopados todos. Y así empezaba a cambiar. <laughs> And then I posted the video and I was like, and, and the caption was like, show this to someone who doesn't know me and ask them where I'm from. Everybody started going crazy with the video. Just like I shared commenting. it. You saw it? I shared it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to send this to my friends to see if they can guess where she's from. And I, I was one of the million people. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And I kept posting videos and then like the fourth video and I was just doing it on Instagram. A friend commented, you should post this on TikTok. I did not have TikTok. I didn't know how that worked. I opened TikTok, uploaded that video and just hashtag, hashtag Colombia, hashtag Mexico, hashtag Puerto Rico, all the accents. And then the next day when I wake up, posted the video, next day, one million views. So I just kept going. One thing led to the next and it's like, I, I couldn't see what was going to happen next, but I just kept going. It's like one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have an idea today. Post it. I have an idea tomorrow. Post it. And the next thing you know, you've been posting for two years and life's amazing and, and things have worked out. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> thank you. But for someone like me who wants to be in control of everything, it was like hard. It was really hard yeah. to decide to do something like mm -hmm. that. Same. But it's possible. Same. It is. And you just have to do it. You just have to. And do when it. you decide to be a freelancer, your job is to find a job. That's mm -hmm. your work. <laughs> your work is to find work. That's your work. And you find it and you do it and then people recommend you and then, you know, and then you, um, in that process I met Wismer, who is my husband, manager, creative producer. He's everything <laughs> in my life. Uh. <laughs> and... Um, we started writing together, we wrote music together, and that was the first album that was nominated in 2021 for Best Singer-Songwriter Album. Amazing. It was very, very, very cool. I had one of those surreal moments, thank you so much, when I was standing in the red carpet and I was like waiting in line to take the pictures, you know, those things that have like three dots where you have to like stand and you're like, picture, 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 <laughs> and then you move. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to like stand properly. So I remember just standing there and I was like, oh my God, I'm in the red carpet. Oh my God, oh my God. And it, it like fell on me like in that moment and I was like, oh my God, this is insane. You know, and then that just took, it was like one thing after the other, after the other. And then now we're here in a way bigger category that's for sure gonna be televised. And um, I wanna share some of that music with all of you. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Are we doing, can we perform now or Q&A first? Q&A first, and then performance? Ah, okay. just kidding. So I'll sing so, after your questions. <laughs> do you guys have any questions for us? For Alemor? For, for Maya. Maya? Dear Genti. Where are you from? <laughs> where, where do you think I'm from? I think you're from Venezuela. I am from Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have people from Venezuela here? Nice. Yes. Amazing. From Venezuela. <laughs> do we have people from Thank Colombia? You. Eh, Colombia! From so Cuba? Cool. <laughs> 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 what other countries are being represented here? 
Brasil, Brasil, Nicaragua, Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, México. México, me encanta. Do we have any beautiful humans here? You're yeah. all supposed to cheer. <laughs> There's a question over here. Oh, I was going to ask where you're from, but somebody else asked it. <laughs> Do you have another question? No. <laughs> Do you have another comment? Is there something you'd like to say? Um, all really pretty. Oh, thank you. Ah, thank you so much. <laughs> Who else? I know you have a question. You yes. know you have one. Let's go. Hello. Um, so I have a question about your music. Uh, are there any like traditional aspects of like Hispanic music that influence you? Like I noticed the drum, uh, I forgot what it's called. The cajon? The cajon, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any other aspects that influence you in your music, of traditional Hispanic music? Absolutely. There's um, the last song of the album, actually, is a fusion that started as a bullerengue, which is a traditional rhythm from the Atlantic of Colombia. And then it started mixing into like other traditional Hispanic rhythms. That's and awesome. now it's a mixture of a lot of different things. Thank you so but much. I'm happy to, to show you and talk to you more about it after if you want to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What kind of tips would you give them, you thinking back how you were in high school, what would you say would be some helpful advice? Oh my God. Try everything. I feel Except like drugs. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I mean, of course. That was an open statement. I'm like, fix it. Yeah, okay. okay. I guess we needed a <laughs> disclaimer. But at least for me, I feel like when you're so young, you haven't seen what's out there. You haven't experienced many things professionally. So I would say every opportunity you see, volunteer for something. You get any opportunity for anything, just go for it. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't see like what you can do with that, what you, you never know what you might learn doing something and you might discover the thing for you mm -hmm. and that that was for me just trying everything an event a volunteer whatever i could do to figure out what i wanted so if you're in that situation that that's my advice i would say um learn from now where are the high school kids where are they where are you sitting okay you're a little bit everywhere <laughs> um i wasted a lot of time worrying about what people thought about me about the way I dressed, about the way I spoke, about the music that I made. And my suggestion or my tip is to not care about that. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna be the one living with yourself and you at least have to make yourself happy and be proud of what you're doing. So don't, really don't care about what other people think. If it's an expression of yours and if it's something that's not hurting other people, obviously, if you're just fully expressing yourself, just do it. No, just do it and, and forget about what other people think because they have really no say in, in who you are, you know? Yes? Are we feeling empowered? <laughs> okay. Everybody speaks English, yes? Okay, amazing. Also, for high school students, I would say don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. I remember when I was in high school, I would be terrified to like raise my hand and just mm. be like, you know, I didn't understand actually. Can you explain it differently? Mm -hmm. And when I was in, in university, I started being more rebel. Like, well, I considered it rebel probably. It was like <laughs> not rebel at all. <laughs> but I would be the one, like people would be like, Maddie, can you, can you tell them this? And I would be the one raising my hand and being like, can you explain different? Or I actually didn't understand. And you might feel like... I used to think that, oh, that was so dumb, but that's actually the most courageous thing you can do because then you'll understand and then you'll get the answers. I would always be like, oh, I didn't get it and I guess I'll never get it. I guess I'm like this. No, be, be okay with asking questions. That's why you're there. You're there to learn. You're there to get the most out of your education. So ask all the questions. Yeah. One here. We have a question. <laughs> When there's hard times, like, uh, God forbid, a loved one passes, or financial problems, or just personal problems by, it, by itself, how do you come back from those setbacks? Wow, what a great question. I think, um, we get so lost sometimes, or I'm gonna speak for myself. I can get lost in, the, in everyday life, and I forget how fragile life actually is. Um, and I forget that death, like you mentioned, is a part of life, you know? And there's something that's very beautiful about 
death. And I know it's weird to say, but there's an end to life, you know? And the reason why we have these moments that we enjoy so much and that you wish they wouldn't end is because we know that there's an end. Imagine if we didn't have an end, if we were going to be alive forever. There's a lot of things that we would take for granted, you know? So I think one of the biggest tools for me to come back from a moment like that is to write down the things that I'm grateful for, the people that I'm grateful for. It can be something as simple as, if you know this, a parking spot that has shade in Miami summer is something that you should be grateful for, right? So it can be something as simple as that, or it could be the fact that your grandparents are alive. You know, a lot of people don't have grandparents that are alive. So it's like being very aware of all of the blessings that you have in your life. And then by becoming aware of that, you becoming the blessing for somebody else, as opposed to asking for a blessing, you know? I feel like that's very powerful. It's when you open your eyes and you actually see what you have, you know? And that's the best way to come out of something like that, where you're aware of all of the beautiful things that you have around. I think when you become um, emotionally more mature over time, you get to see beauty in everything, even, if, even in the things that are not so beautiful, you know? That's my answer. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. We have more questions? No? It's time for me to sing? You got it. Let's go. We want to hear you, Ale. <laughs> Do you guys know what kintsugi is? Have you all seen that, um, those Japanese pots that are put back together with gold? That they have like those gold creases? It's a Japanese philosophy that talks about how what may seem as something that doesn't have any more value and that it's broken, when you put it back together with gold, it becomes a more valuable item, right? And I feel like we can do that with ourselves. Maybe you might feel broken at some point or you might feel like you're really messed up. So you just embrace those mistakes and you become a human that has more experience and that in return has more value, right? That's what this song is about. Tanto tiempo que ha pasado Llevo meses entendiendo estas heridas permanentes Dicen que el tiempo lo cura y no te advierten Las rupturas de la muerte hacen más fuerte Las voy a cubrir de oro Y aprende de fuego a todo. Can you guys snap with me? Uh. Así es derrota me valoro. Como Kintsugi, como Kintsugi. Ya no me quedan ganas de llorar. Y aprovecho para decirte que quiero soltar todo lo que me aferraba, sobraba, ya no sirve para nada. Soy toda una cerámica azulada, totalmente fracturada, una niña enamorada, hermosamente reparada, dulcemente ilusionada. Las voy a cubrir de oro. Y aprenderle fuego a todo I like that, I like that, I like that Así es derrota me valoro Como Kintsugi, como Kintsugi
descubrí de oro Y aprendí de fuego todo Thank you Poco a poco me enamoro Un poco más de mí Como Kintsugi Yo las voy a cubrir de oro Voy a prenderle fuego a todo, fuego a todo Poco a poco me enamoro Yo me enamoro You can do that Un poco más de mí Thank you so much Muchas gracias Do you have time for more music? Well, it looks like they're going to be late to class. Okay. <laughs> that, the name of that song? Kintsugi. K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I. Kintsugi. Okay, now that you've warmed up, do you want to sing this one with me? It's very easy. Very easy. It goes like this. <clears throat> La. Can we try? A ver. Okay, remember when we talked about not caring about what people think? This is the time to do that, okay? You want to try it again? <laughs> Let's try it again. I'll sing it with you. But far, all right. tell you a story. Lived upon a darker time, spent the days hopelessly blind, trying to find, trying so hard for you. I forgot to wonder if you were the answer. You're not. Open to closing my mind, you see. Question all the ones who were freed to be. Those who found the answer. Those who, <laughs> true love, a possibility. Volatile and drowned in a dark as deep as the dwindling light that would hide behind the bitter pain she had shown me. Time and time and time again. Everlasting wet and rebellious droplets of dew bask in the sun's glory and shine just like your eyes did the night we became undone with love and dark mystery. But now you leave. Lovely, bitter, vacancy, shades of inconsistency, dried up wounds in the palms of my hands reveal the fight, the tough demand between my conscience and my mind, only to find overwhelming fear, sharp and bending, simply waiting, your demand is never ending, and I dance the dance of life, confused and gray, pretending we're okay when we're not okay. and vulnerable a true work of art refuses admission of her imperfection she carries her silence and all of her answers the dark mystery the bitterness a fear made of lies and every damn day she dies just a little every day she dies just a little she dies existing yet barely alive my lungs come untied and I forget to breathe This love is a precipice infused with blood and prejudice My wounds who seek your unrealistic demand as I understand <laughs> My throat may fracture and my mind might fray but I will stand I will look into my eyes, I will dress myself with brave And no, I will not stay with you, I will not stay Come 
on, everybody. Sing with me. Here we go. Y'all sound beautiful. Thank you for singing with me. Yeah, Nelson, do we have time? Do you have time for one more song or no? One more. Okay. Es que we have a very special guest here tonight or today. Sorry, I'm used to performing at night. <laughs> you can start from there and then. I can tell them who you are. My dearest beautiful humans, Nicole Horvath. Solo aprendí yo ya Y que si yo me he visto así Y que si no te gusta a ti Que si yo bailo así Yo bailo para mí Y que si yo me he visto así Y que si no te gusta a ti Y que si yo bailo así Y que yo bailo para mí Y que Gracias this is Nicole Horvath, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ale. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, MDC. And listen, this would not be possible without the great support from MDC North, from President Vasquez, from Dean Venezuela, from Evelyn Rodriguez, and everybody that has made this possible. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold. Built on the idea that in embracing flaws and imperfections, you can create an even stronger and more beautiful piece of art. Much like ourselves. 